Hey, I'm Dave. Welcome to my shop. I'm Dave Plummer, a retired operating systems engineer from Microsoft, going back to the MS-DOS and Windows 95 days, and I just hit the jackpot, both literally and figuratively. I managed to take a video of the secret service and configuration menus of an active slot machine right on the casino floor after winning the top progressive jackpot on that machine. And I secretly recorded the whole thing, including cool details like the machine's payout percentage, total drop, coin in, coin out, and so on. How'd I do it? Well, this weekend I was at a casino with my wife and some friends. I was playing max bet on a Mardi Gras themed machine known as Spin Big Galaxy when I got the bonus wheel. It's a good thing too as I was about to walk after losing what felt like 9 out of 10 games, but I spun the wheel and for the first time in my life it landed on the major award, the top progressive jackpot for that bank of machines. How much? Well, good news and bad news. The good news is that it paid 675,166 credits. The bad news is that those credits were just pennies because I'm a cheap bastard and it was a penny slot. Still, that works out to $6,751.66, so I'm not complaining at all. But what happened next was even better, at least for me, at least in some ways. As you may or may not be aware, you have to pay income tax on any gambling winnings, including slot machine payouts. Now, the onus is on you to keep track of your win-loss ledger and report it on your tax return. But in the event you get a payout of $1,200 or more, the IRS really wants to make sure that you don't forget. So anytime anything happens on a slot machine that pays $1,200 or more, the machine goes into what's known as jackpot lockup. This isn't when you cash out, this is right as soon as you hit the win. You sit there and you do your happy dance and you wish you could find a waitress for a drink while you eagerly wait for a slot attendant to do three things. First, they come over and they verify the win. Next, they verify your identity and your social and your income tax status to see if they have to hold back taxes right then and there. Finally, they give you your jackpot, or what remains of it after any withholdings, in good old cash along with an IRS form to file with your annual return to claim the income. Then they count out your pile of cash right there at the machine. What made this little adventure different, however, is what happened when they came over to verify the win. Normally, a pair of slot people will come over. One validates the win while the other checks your ID and so on. This time around was different for some reason and only one person came over. Better yet, when they went to verify the win, they seemed new and they navigated through the entire set of configuration and payout menus looking for whatever it was they were trying to find. This was all information that the public, including me, never gets to see. Everything right down to the win percentage configuration was right there on the screen for a nerd like me to totally geek out on. But how was I going to remember it all? I did what any reasonable man would do. I pulled out my cell phone and recorded the whole thing right over her shoulder without her ever noticing. Now, if you've spent any time in the big Vegas casinos before, you're well aware that there is massive security in the form of a camera, or at least a dome that could contain a camera, about every six feet in every direction, it seems. And security wanders around continually, even if they are discreet about it. The casinos are pretty sensitive about you using your camera in the casino, and I think it's primarily as an anti-cheating thing and a privacy measure for other people, but suffice to say they don't encourage you to take your camera out and just start filming in the casino, especially at a game especially of their employees working on that game, and especially when they're deep in the secret accounting menus as she was. Plus, I was right outside the sports book, which complicates things further. I'm not entirely sure why, but I almost once got ejected just for naively taking a still photo of the big screen that shows all their sports odds, which I guess they treasure and are pretty secretive about. But rather than rambling on and telling you all about it, I'll just show you the video I took and pause it at the interesting parts to point out some of the cooler things that it revealed. After the slot inspection, Hang on until I tell you what happened during the cash payout. It involves my wife pouring a drink on a screaming little old lady who I was sure was about to roll me and take my winnings, but more about that later. Fortunately, I immediately noticed that I couldn't really see the text, and so I switched to the 2x lens on the iPhone, and it helped a great deal. Now you can see it really crisply. Actually, it's pretty impressive how good it looks, I think. Up at the top, we have a bunch of boring asset tag and accounting information doesn't really start to get interesting until right below that where we see the ticket in limit and the ticket payout limit both set to $3,000. Apparently that means if you had a ticket, the biggest one you can really get or carry around in this casino is $3,000. After that, you have to go to the cage. The IRS win limit is set to $11,999, meaning if you win $1,200 or more, you need to stop the machine and that's when it goes into the jackpot lockup and requires the attendant to come over. Credit meter limit, not quite sure what that is. Below that is perhaps one of the more interesting statistics, which is the percentage, 92.5. 
I assume that is the payback amount, so that for every dollar that comes in, 92.5 cents is generally paid back out. That's a terrible win percentage for a slot machine in this day and age. Um, normally on the strip, you can get up to as high as 98%, 96% should be more normal, 95%. So 92.5, not a great ratio. Up in the versions tab, we can find some information about the game itself. I actually googled around for a spin big galaxy v6 bmm.exe and a number of other file names just like it, but could not find anything. So I was kind of disappointed. I was hoping I was going to find a copy. If I knew the exact file name, I would have to find one somewhere. But no, not in the entire world. It looks like this machine actually supports a multi game menu as well that's installed, although there's only one game, so it probably never shows the multi game menu. Okay, let's have a look see at this screen. At the very top of the screen, we can see hand pay IRS limit exceeded. That is the machine telling us that it has to make a payout to the player, that's me, that exceeds the $1,200, which is the limit. We'll see that limit elsewhere, but for now, that's what's going on there. Before that, you can see about seven minutes before that, I inserted my ticket, and I forget how much that was worth. Um, it was not the 1004 you see. That was somebody cashing out about 27 minutes before I arrived at that machine, and so it was idle for about 27 minutes. And we can see all the other idle gaps and what other people inserted a hundred dollar bill in. Well, I'm not really sure why it doesn't validate the amount of the ticket that you assert or it doesn't log that in the event log. I find that a little weird because I would expect it of anything. So if it's going to log dollars, it should also log tickets, but maybe it does it elsewhere. I, I don't know. Probably there is a voucher tab that we never see. And I'm going to guess that's where it is. She's not seeing what she needs here, so she's going to fumble around until she finally changes us over to the counters page, and we've got to look at that. Now, while the accounting denomination is one cent, I'm guessing that might be to distinguish it from other currencies, because it, the machine, you can actually specify whether you want to play one cent, two cent, three cents, five cents per hand. I was playing one cent, unfortunately, but... Um, you can change it in game and I don't think the changes here. I think that is basically what is the unit of currency here. Next, we can see the amount of jackpots that have been paid by the attendant, which matches the amount of progressives that have been paid by the attendant, which tells me that all the progressives are actually over 1200 bucks because that probably means they all have to be paid by the attendants. I don't know what the attendant paid canceled credits actually means in this case. Uh, I have no idea. I'd love to hear your take on that in the comments. Now, over in the game meter section, we have coin in and we have coin out. That tells us basically how much the machine has received and how much it has paid out. And the difference, which is, I think, about $115,000 uh, would be their profit. Total drop right below that is the amount that people have actually put into the machine, I believe. And I think it's cash and vouchers, probably combined. Vouchers in and vouchers out tells us how much that the people have put in using the prepaid tickets that you get out of the machine instead of the coins that you used to get at one time. And vouchers out is essentially the tokens or coinage that has gone out. Bill in, I'm not clear on it. It can't really be that this machine's only taken $1,461 in cash, so that doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, more interesting is the games won versus games lost. 407,000 games lost to 181,000 games won. Quite a difference. Game recall ledger tab, we can see my last seven games, which I lost all but one of, before finally winning the wheel bonus of 67.51.66 to yield me back some number $7,863.36. Next, you can see because they debit you the number of credits that they hand pay you, the full 67.51.66, although I don't remember getting any pennies. Oh no, you can see they roll over there to the next credit, which goes to 11.11.70. So that's the final amount because they back out the hand pay amount and that's not carried through into the balance. The delta between that 11.16.20 and the 11.11.70 is the game price of 450 a pull, which was the max bet at one cent. This screen appears to be some basic accounting of my game and my session. You can see that the game name is here, Progressive, no. That's because this is not really tied into a big set of multiple machines that are all linked together. This is actually just independent machines that look like they are progressive. That's hard to explain, but they have a major prize that goes up and down up on the top of the machine, even though they're not networked and linked together to share prize information. So 
Not technically a progressive machine, but it acts like one, and that's why it had a jackpot. Huge number of games played on this machine, 11,881,897 games. Now, that's actual individual pulls. That's not people walking up to the machine. That's people tapping the button at least one time. Now, the bingo card ID, and this is pure speculation on my part, but it looks like it's 128-bit GUID as far as I can tell. So it's probably just randomly generated it that way, and they figure that that's unique across time and space, big enough. Um, but what's going on here is, I believe in some jurisdictions, and it's not true where I was, but if you're on a Native American reservation or something like that, in some places they require that they play bingo because, you know, they're allowed to have gambling, but not technology for some reason. I don't really get it. But the, the reasoning behind it aside, they're only allowed to have bingo-based games. So they actually have to generate the slot machine results from the bingo session. So they generate this bingo session mathematically, and then they derive a slot machine session from that. And in fact, if you read the machines in those areas, they will say that the actual game is the bingo game and everything else is just for entertainment. And it'll show you your little bingo card. And I should have a card here. Yep, five by five card. And it's eight balls of bingo. So it shows you where the balls land on the card. And I have no idea what you need to do to get a winning pattern on these cards because I don't play bingo and this doesn't apply in my jurisdiction anyway. So I have no idea. But you can tell that's what's going on. Next, the video abruptly ends because she's done and I gotta put my camera away. I've taken great pains not to identify the specific casino, even to the extent of throwing in a few red herrings because I don't want the employee responsible to get fired or reprimanded or some nonsense like that. She was very friendly and it was very busy and she had no idea that I was filming over her shoulder. I've got no reason to throw her under the bus and wouldn't want her to get in trouble for something that I did. That brings up an important side point. This is a somewhat technical video, of course, but it's also well outside the scope of the programming stuff that I normally do on my channel. And I thought, hey, picking inside this machine was fascinating to me. Maybe it'll be interesting to others. So if you're cool with this kind of diversion on my channel, please take a moment to give this video a like. And if you're not cool with it, please leave a thumbs down. I'm not kidding either, as I really need the feedback from my viewers on whether it's okay to go off on a non-programming tangent now and then. The worst thing you can do is just ignore it and do neither, because then I've got no idea what's going on or even leave me a comment with your more detailed thoughts if you prefer. And of course, if you're not already subscribed to my channel, please take a moment to do so, lest this be the last time we ever see each other. There's lots more cool tech stuff where this came from, so join the party. You can check the little arrow in the corner here, which will pop up a subscribe button for your convenience. Stop by the Discord server link in the video description to chat live as well. Now about that cash payout. After all the shenanigans involving the jackpot confirmation, it was finally time to receive my cash. I extended my greedy little palms and they started counting out fat stacks of $100 bills right to me. That's when my wife walked by and squeezing between myself and the slot attendant and another player, she accidentally spilled a few drops of her club soda onto an old lady's foot. The lady completely lost it and started flailing her arms, appealing to anybody who would listen for help. This was also literally halfway through the cash count and she was so animated and loud and over the top that I was certain it was some clever scam to distract me, like she follows around players about to receive cash hand pays and creates a big scene and skims the cash somehow. But it wasn't. It was just an old lady who was angry about her foot getting wet, and so we got her a napkin, and she shot us a few more dirty looks, and I consoled myself by sleeping on a big pile of cash that night before I took it to the bank in the morning. I never went like that, so it was a nice change of pace. Thanks for joining me out here in the shop today. In the meantime and in between time, I hope to see you next time, right here in Dave's Garage. This little chair will be waiting for one of you, and a rocking chair for another who likes to rock, and a big armchair for two to curl up in. All next time on Dave's Garage.